entrepreneur in um, clean tech and natural resources, cobalt and aluminium. Um, most recently, I was speaking to a partner in a VC firm, and he said to me that when they get a pitch deck come through, they will give it priority or are more likely to invest if it's a qualified lead, i.e. if it comes from somebody within their network or from somebody at the golf or the rugby. So here we're talking about um, trying to be more inclusive to invest in groups that are probably not typically invested in. So um, as VC companies, if this is a posture that is being adopted, how, how will you invest in other groups? Um, that's the first question. Also in regards to mental health, if we get told that you want to invert, I mean invest in diverse groups, women, them, so on and so forth, and then the reality is entirely different, that is not so good for um, mental health. Um, I think that's definitely a really fair question and something that um, keeps me up at night, to say the least. And one of the things that we've um, acknowledged uh, is that a lot of diversity talk is an awful lot like standing on the other end of a large body of water and saying, you're very welcome, come over whenever you want, um, but it's a very large body of water. And I think all the intention doesn't change the fact that if there's no bridge, no real effective bridge um, between sort of traditional sources of capital and venture um, and underestimated communities, um, whatever you want to call them, then nothing can change. And a lot of that is down to just like what we consider to be like normal practice. Um, so one way that we're trying and something that I'm very excited to see uh, other uh, VCs starting to is creating scout programs that are specifically set up so that the, the individuals who are sourcing your lead, another group, if you will, of qualified um, references are themselves diverse. At the end of the day, if you find um, you know, a female entrepreneur who's running a black women tech group community, the, the references that you will source for you are far more likely um, to be diverse than the ones that you were getting previously. Um, and on and on and so forth. So I think that's certainly one initiative. And beyond that, it's also just um, other initiatives in Notion VC, for instance, are running something called Included, which is just broadening um, the base of VCs themselves and bringing in more people who look like me and look like you into um, the venture capital space. And I think that will be um, a big help. But I think you touch on something bigger, which is how do the day-to-day -day processes of how VCs run things impact the people who are pitching? At the end of the day, we all say that Seeking funding is a horrible and stressful and straining event, and VCs have a role in that, a significant one, because we're the ones, um, either way, with the power to make it one way or the other. Um, and deciding how timely we get back to things, how much we try to be responsive, and how we set things up so that people aren't screaming into a void looking for money and getting silence back, um, or, or incredibly clipped answers, um, is an important thing to consider. And whether that looks like investing in more tech, whether that means putting the money to hire more people, whether that just means being clever about the way in which we set up um, our cold outreach. All of that, I think, is important. I think that's part of what needs to feed into these conversations, not just the extreme things that contribute um, to founder strain, but the day-to-day -day of how VC works um, and how can we, that can be better optimized. And, and publicizing it. So publicizing that point in particular, we um, supported the research that the British Business Banking for Rescue VC ran was in the last year, it was published earlier this year, and it actually said that a lot of the leads that were coming through, um, that actually got through to investment committee, um, were warm leads, and actually having a published report that's government backed, which states that, um, gets people talking, and that's the start. That's how you started, and how you talked about just getting started and having that conversation. Um, we're, we're very keen to keep pushing the boundaries on that point, and how do you get past your your existing uh, network, and I just mentioned some wonderful ideas that I think are now permeating throughout the industry. Do, do you mind, I, can I just add one story, which might be an amusing, uh, amusing for you? So I share your pain. So when, when we raised the money for Octopus right at the very start, um, there were three founders. We were 23, 24, 25, so we didn't have any money. Uh, we ended up using the Yellow Pages, and we spent nine months cold calling. What people. was that? Uh, exactly, yeah, yeah, it's for old people, uh, it's a phone direct. We spent nine months cold calling people, 
and uh, it's kind of just debilitating doing that. And we decided to have a break from calling. We were calling financial advisors. We ended up with 84 investors in the business. And I thought we'd have a break. We'll call VC firms and see what we get to. I think we might even call some private equity firms. It was ridiculous, just naivety. Uh, and we called them, and we must have called about 100. And of the 100 we called, uh, we didn't get any wonder. There was only one person who took my call and uh, talked to me. And he was a guy who, I won't mention the firm, but he'd come across from America, and he'd been charged with setting up the European office, and I think he was probably there on his own. It was probably the first time his phone had rung. So he answered it, and he said, oh, that sounds really interesting, sending information across. So I, clearly, that was a warm lead for me. I just hounded this guy to death. I mean, it was clearly my fault, until eventually I said, hi, it's Simon calling from Octopus. And he said, you again. And I said, yeah, it's me again. He said, listen to this noise. I said, are you listening? And then he just went, this noise went, mm. and he said, did you hear that? I said, yes. He said, that's your business plan. I shredded it. Never call me again. Uh, and, and that, for me, it, it, you know, we can talk about all kinds of things. It's basic manners, right? It's like going to a restaurant and someone pouring you water and the, and the person you're with not saying thank you and looking them in the eye. That's not okay. So entrepreneurs send you a business plan. This is their heart, their soul, something they love very dearly. The very least you can do is respond, even to say, do you know what? I'm not interested. Here's why I'm not interested. And even better, here are some of the other people you might want to talk to. So just be helpful. Uh, and the world is a small place, but so for you getting that response, uh, I feel for you. Uh, you could dig up the yellow pages. I'm not. It takes a long time, uh, uh, but uh, but yeah, it's difficult. Hopefully, it will change because I mean, the, the community's small, and entrepreneurs will talk, and it's about manners. Behave yourself. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I think we have run out of time. So thank you, Simon, Rory, Daisy, and Caroline, and thank you all today.